All right. Well, thanks for coming on the show tonight. Wow, that's a, we got a lot of people tuning in to see Hollywood and Billy Starks. John Cosper was nice enough to set this up tonight. So uh, thank you, ladies, for joining us tonight. Thank you. Thank you, John. And you guys he have he, so you guys have never met before. No, this no, is our first time now. interacting. This is awesome. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, let's kick it off. Uh, so, Billy, uh, how long have you been wrestling for? I've been wrestling for two years now. Two years. And what was it that made you want to get into it? I mean, how did that start? So I was introduced to wrestling through Mouse, which is my stepfather, who's also a photographer. And I picked up the camera after him. But like when he introduced me, it just clicked in my head. This is what I wanted to do. And it just stayed. For many people, it was like, she's not really going to do that, is she? And then it ended up being like, no, nope, this is definitely what I'm going to do with my life, guys. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Now, Hollywood, how did you, how did you get involved? Now, you know, Hollywood was part of Glow, which was the gorgeous ladies of wrestling. And Hollywood, how how did you so decide that you want to get? How did, how did you make that decision? Oh boy. Well, you know what? When you're young, and I'm sure Billy knows this, um, when you want to do something that's new in front of an audience, you're going to be on TV. You just go for it. You have you know, you're not afraid of, of anything. You're just like, give it to me. I'm going to do it. But anyway, for me, it was um, an audition. Um, now, I wasn't so much into TV. I wasn't an actress or anything like that. Um, wrestling at that point wasn't this huge thing that it is today. So this was new. And um, I was uh, in a medical field and I had done a little bit of extra work. And there was just a um, uh, a little message on my message machine back in the day when we had those and it was an audition for the sports show and they just they didn't say what kind of sports it was so I went down after work and I uh, checked it out to see what it was and they told us it was about women's wrestling that was going to shoot in Las Vegas and I don't I didn't <laughs> know anything about pro wrestling we're talking about 1980 it was 85 1985 I'm like I, I I'm picturing in my head you guys black and white you know like how my grandpa <laughs> used to watch and i'm not that old to say black and white but i'm thinking of these, these you know gorgeous george and all these different types that i'd see my grandfather watch but i had no idea so i was really interested and you know i've always said when you're young you have no fear it was just like bring it on and then i went into the audition and there was a lot of girls and they kept weeding out everybody and weeding out. And our trainer at the time was Mondo Guerrero. Mondo was awesome. He was really, he was hardcore though. You know, he, he didn't want us laughing at, at anything that he was teaching us. And, you know, all those girls, they were, you know, entertainers. Nobody was a wrestler. So, you know, here we are. I remember him asking, which one of you ladies can listen to this, Billy? They said, Mondo goes, which one of you girls can ram your head into the turnbuckle and land on your back? Now, try to envision that in your head when you don't even know. <laughs> I just went like this, Billy. I was like, yes, I can do it. I can do it. I might be paralyzed after this, but I can do it. <laughs> um, I did that. David McLean loved that. And I was hired immediately just because I wasn't afraid to do it and we only needed 12 girls to do a pilot ed and um we did our pilot and then we sold it to television and i did four years with the gorgeous ladies of wrestling wow Pretty cool now were you guys wrestling I, I can't remember were you wrestling in front of an uh, an audience or yes. was it a studio audience? live audience no 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 this was live so we were in live Las Vegas. Okay. yeah and so we moved around a little bit so the first two years or season one and two we're at the Riviera Hotel, so on the Strip. So you know what they made us do? They made us give out little cards that look like this. There were like little four by six cards that said, gorgeous ladies are wrestling free TV. You guys could be on TV. So we had to hand these out. We literally had to you know, hand these to people in the casino so that we could have an audience. We'd put them on cars. Um, and people would come to see us. And then we started regularly every Saturday, we would have kind of the same people coming to see us, but it was, it was, um, it was free for everybody. They could sit in there and, and drink and, and, and watch all of us. Um, 
it was cool. So, so that's how we had our audience. So, and then on the third and fourth season, we moved off of the strip because we had, um, we wanted motorcycles and we wanted fire. We wanted bigger stuff. So we moved to a warehouse um, in season three and four outside of the strip so we could have more uh, pyrotechnics and different stuff like that happening. Wow. Pretty cool. Now, Billy, what type of um, venues are you wrestling in currently? I watched, I did, I did watch one of your matches. So like wrestling right now is still a little weird because we're doing a lot of no fan shows. So mm -hmm. it's been like really like the environment has changed a lot. Um, like there's been a lot of tapings at a place that's close to me in Jeffersonville called uh, the arena. And there's been a lot of tapings I've done there. Um, and then I'm going to go somewhere else soon, but it's a surprise. So I'm not going to say it yet uh, to do more tapings, which I'm excited about. Wow, that's awesome! Cool. I can't imagine doing it in front of no. I still can't believe people do it in front of no audience. No audience. It's very like hard, it's hard to do, that. right? What's that? Yeah, I, I bet it would be frustrating because yeah. we were in South Carolina and it snowed, and we had a live show. You guys, it was we had five people show up, and you know what? We did that show, so I totally know what that feels like to have no audience. But I look at it as practice, you know, practice is mm -hmm. perfect, um, but we gave it our all. Um, Billy, for me, regardless if we had five, you know, or 5,000, 500, whatever you want to call it, I always gave it 110%. Um, you know, if you love what you do, that's what you do. You, you give I completely the, agree. Yeah, I have a feeling that you love what you do a lot as well. <laughs> Is it well? Is it hard? Because I'll give you an example. I used to be a stand-up comedian, and mm -hmm. I remember playing in front of a thousand people. And playing in front of seven people is yeah. a ten times harder, because when there's a thousand people, it drowns out. You don't need a lot of people to like you. You need like a couple of people, and it gets contagious. Yes. But when there's no audience or like a little bit of an audience, I feel like you might be able to like see like one guy in in the third row. And you're like, oh, maybe that guy's not into it. And you start like, maybe, does it get into your head? Like, does it get in your head? Never. I think it's like no. more have developed me to be like an even more emotional person because okay. it will like draw in more people. Because I feel like before it was kind of easy because you're like, oh, I can get this person and this person. Right. They're going to spell it for me. Yeah, now exactly. I need to do it myself where I get everybody by doing one thing and I get them. Well, that's cool. That's good. Yeah. So I like what to was your um, person? Go ahead. Go ahead, Hollywood. I, I when I when I was wrestling, I, I would like to pick out one or two different people and grab their drinks. <laughs> that was one of my things is they were <laughs> drinking back then. I grab their drink. I might take a little because I'm a heel, grab their drink, yeah. grab a little bit of their beer, and then Billy, I would just throw it on my opponent. Oh, and they did not. <laughs> let me tell you, those girls were pit. You didn't see their faces. <laughs> it was so great. You know, or, or I would ask them for their belt. I'd pick out someone. I need your belt. Okay. And they'd be taking off their belt. It was so great. I'd wrap it around one of the girls' necks and just throw her back into the audience. It was just. <laughs> oh, that's uh, that's awesome. Billy, are you. Do you. Um, oh, so great. And I just like the look of surprise. That's the best when people don't know mm -hmm. what's coming, right? Yes, uh, I, I love underneath that. Underneath the ring, I would hide stuff under the ring. So we'd have to be uh, probably at our location, just say at 2.30. And I would get there about 2.10. And then I'd ask our cameraman, like, which cord could I use? Put one down for me. Because back then, nothing's wireless. So lots of cords everywhere, yeah. all taped down. So I would say put down like this green tape and I'll pull that one up so I can use it as a weapon, of course. Um, and then one time I picked up the wrong one and it was attached to the headphones of one of our PAs. And she's like, Hollywood, Hollywood, you know, and she's coming into the, you know, camera. Oh, it was so funny. And, uh, but um, those were fun Fun, fun day. So enjoy. God, you're 16 years old and you have so much, you know, so much mm -hmm. time ahead of you. And uh, enjoy every minute of it because you will be interviewed, I'm sure, when you're old like me. 
<laughs> and there'll be another new generation and you can just remember all these fun times. I need to come see you sometime. I would love to come see you, Russell. I think that would be wonderful. Cheer You're welcome. You <laughs> yeah, so, I Billy, love it. What was, that was um, great. Your, fir your first match, what was that like? Were you, ner were you nervous at all? Did you practice beforehand? Like, how does that work? So mine literally just happened day of show. The funny story behind it was originally it was supposed to be me and this other girl's debut who we trained together, but this was our first like live show and we were supposed to be pre-show. Then it got moved to semi main because we sold too many tickets and they were afraid that after the uh, pre-show, everyone was going to leave. So they're like, uh, we have to move you guys. And we're like, Oh Oh God, because this is both right. of our first matches. And then it, it ended up turning into a triple threat. And a triple threat for your first match is kind of difficult. <laughs> but we ended up having a really good time. And it was an interesting first match for me. That's awesome. What was it like afterwards? Were you able to, uh, you know, come down off that high? I mean, that's got to be a pretty, you know, <laughs> big adrenaline so rush for you. I was on a high for a while. So during the match, I jumped off the top and sprained my ankle. So I finished the match, did all of that. And I come out and like, uh, I was like, all of my friends were there. They drove from like Ohio, Indy, wherever they had to, to come see me, which I really appreciate. So that made me very emotional. So I was already on this high and then I see all my friends. So I get even higher. <laughs> um, and like, my mom like when we got home was like you're not going to sleep and she could just see it and I just gave my room and I probably didn't fall asleep until like one or two in the morning of just me just being like giddy uh -huh. I just <laughs> that's awesome that's Good awesome I, yeah that's great I remember <laughs> us we sometimes had to do four matches in a night because we were filming so we started two in the afternoon and we would go to like nine o'clock at night and it was, yeah. man, you can only do that in your twenties. I'm telling you, you know, maybe thirties, <laughs> but I was 21, 22 and we had like four matches. So that would be a, a singles and a couple of tag team ones. And then you do your battle Royal. And then when we were done, we had to do, um, like our sketches, we had sketches or we do things like, Hey, Clemson university, uh, glow is coming to your town so we had to stay after <laughs> it was such a long night i was so exhausted i'd be like oh i couldn't even we had glitter you know what i mean we had these glitter i had like a star on my face and it was filled with glitter all the time going up into my hair there was glitter everywhere in your bed trying to get all of that off glitter is different today than it was back then mm -hmm. you know it's real fine but back then you get that in your eye and you're you're sure. done for a minute <laughs> um but yeah but there was a lot going on back then you know and plus it was you know gosh we were really back in that day the only one in a lot in a in a tv situation doing something then besides wwf at the time and uh just all women's league back then i know there was a lot of independent ladies doing their stuff as well but boy you'll never forget those those first matches the first you know i couldn't even look any of the uh the audience in the eye ad i was just like <gasps> you know that was <laughs> my first time after i was really nervous and my first match was with uh lisa moretti who is ivory from the okay. wwf and and she was just such a great you already you could tell that this girl she was just everything she did was perfect you know she was a uh, a cheerleader and her dance routines that she did with her tag team partner were just sensational and me and vine would look at them and go oh my god we have to follow that how are we going to do that but you know so she was my first match and you knew right away that that girl was going far i think she was our first champion for uh, the you know for the baby faces for a little while yeah unbelievable great match hollywood how many um what was the typical week like for you guys because you would tape was it once a week that you guys would tape yeah so basically the first season was we had to live in vegas 
So there was a lot of working out and doing the sketches and preparing um, for this television show. Basically, uh, we'd go in and try to put in, figure out who you're going to be with. We would have on Fridays uh, like a, a dress rehearsal. Our cameraman needed to know what was going to happen over there. Who's, you know, what table is going to have, what's going to break here. Who's getting hit over the head here. Who's going into the pillar over here. Who's spray painting where, you know. So we had to have that dress rehearsal. But they had kept us pretty busy, um, you know, six days a week. Uh, come the third and fourth season, when we had all new characters and the only people that were left from season one and two were myself and uh mountain fiji i worked a little deal where i'm like nope i'm not coming back and they're like no 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 we want you to come back so i made a deal with them that i would come in on wednesday and i could leave after the show on saturday i kind of felt like i was missing out in los angeles and you know i'd already spent two years in vegas i kind of wanted to have a little you know, you're 20 years old, you want to live your life as a 20 year old and have a little fun uh, once in a, a once in a blue moon. So for two years, I was in Vegas working pretty hard. And so the schedules and then it was back to back the seasons. When we were done with season one, we had a little break uh, and then we went straight into season two. And then in season three and four, there was a one month break and then back into it again. So for four years, you know, from 86, 87, 88, and 89, all I did, I, I breathed and slept and <laughs> ate wrestling for four years. So after that, I needed a little break. And then, then Glow ended, you know, in, in uh, 1990, 89, 90. Wow, that's quite the, uh, that, that sounds like a lot. Uh, Billy, it how about you? What, what is your um your week, your typical week like now? How many matches a week are you, are you wrestling? You know, what does that look like? So my typical week right now is usually like Monday is training night. Uh, Tuesday is my day off. Wednesday we have training. Uh, Thursday I get a break. Um, I might have tapings Friday or Saturday. Sunday's usually freed up at the moment. And then right back to the next week. <laughs> wow. So are you, um, That's you know, crazy. are you looking – do you have anyone that you look up to that you're trying to, you know, maybe mimic your style after or. There's like a few girls, but I feel like wrestling now has like grown the women's division so much. There's so many role models to see that are like me myself. Um, and like, I took a lot of inspiration from Kylie Ray when she was still wrestling. And then um, when I was like, first started watching wrestling who I like really, really enjoyed was Bailey and Sasha and Charlotte and Becky. So like all of those women's when I started watching wrestling were a huge inspiration for me before I even started. Okay. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that is, that is pretty cool. And they, I, think they... I like those girls too. I like Sasha <laughs> Banks. She reminds me of a Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> the women's Please. divisions absolutely has, has, has definitely grown. I, I feel like there was a little bit of a lull. I mean, I loved it in the '80s when they had like you know Wendy Richter and yeah, and, and them. I mean, I thought that, was, and then there was a little bit of a lull, but it's definitely come back. Um, so Billy, do you think this is something that you're going to do the rest of your life, or do you think it's? I mean, I wish when I was your age, I knew what I wanted to do. I like plan for this to be like the rest of my life. Uh, me and my mom have like discussed like I need a backup plan just in case my body does not handle it the right way. Um, because okay. like that's right. <laughs> when I like started wanting to be a wrestler, she made me a deal of I will pay for wrestling school if you go to college. Well, wrestling school came early, so I still have to hold up my end of the deal. <laughs> well, that's that's a, yeah. The your back, mom, the how back... old's your mom? How old's your mom, honey? Oh, my mom is thirty-eight. How... Younger than <laughs> she is a baby. <laughs> Too. She thinks she's old. I love it. But no, she's not. Tell your mother she's very young. Um, gosh, I could be. I guess I could be your grandma. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. I could. I could be her grandmother. <laughs> oh, it's crazy. Um, your mom is right, though. I always tell younger generation it's really important to have Plan B. Um, you don't want to be hitting the ground when you're 50 years old or, or 40. You know what I mean? It hurts. When you're young, you guys are all agile. We, we roll uh, simple. We're, we're roly-poly. 
Um, I was lucky. I did not get hurt my four years wrestling. And then I continued to wrestle afterwards with different um, uh, independent companies uh, as well. But it, I think also good diet and keeping yourself in shape. And obviously you are doing that and training all the time is so important. But plan B, oh yeah. <laughs> hold up your end of the bargain your mom said to do it so when you have a chance try to do that find something else that you love though you know like right now i make soap i, I know that sounds that's not really no i saw I like some it. pictures making, about it right i love it it's <laughs> really cool and it's it it um you know i started making this soap before this pandemic and just because i love everything about soap like this one I made yesterday. Can you see that? Does that look oh, kind of cool? Pretty. What's your favorite like this one's scent of lavender? Li oh my god, I love them all, but uh, you know what? I like rose, but I like lavender, and I really like um, um, mint, like peppermint mm -hmm. and eucalyptus. That is awesome. So if you're like <laughs> working out and you are, you know, it's just soothing. Um, or it makes you feel kind of cool, actually, just put it that way. But I love doing it because there's no preservatives, and I like something that's healthy for me. That's that's mm -hmm. one of my reasons. And then all of a sudden, I started making it. I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is so cool. And I just get this calm. It's, like, totally calm. You know, it's just like a whole nother thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, wrestling, you get 110%. Well, I do the same thing on these soap. I have to get you guys some soap. <laughs> um, so stay. We'll, uh, we'll keep in touch for sure. So I can send you some. You'll have to check it out. And my soap line, I'm just going to tell you really quick, my shameless plug, hollywoodbotanica.com. And that's with a K. So I just wanted, I want to thank everybody. There's a lot of people that have been buying the soap. We have this pandemic. We need to wash our hands more. So, man, the soap comes in handy, my friend. It just does. Well, I'll tell anyway, you what, you definitely have the, uh, the, you know, the, cu the customer service down. <laughs> from like it's it's almost like zappos where you literally shout everyone out that buys soap from you I, I do I, that's I just, great that's a really great idea i think you should i just i just that's just me you know what i mean you know what i brought yeah. up catholic my mom and dad are very conservative hey they didn't really want me wrestling but they said <laughs> they'd watch it on television but they wouldn't come to the matches my mom was too freaked out about it um but you know what Lots of chores in our family. We're always taught to say thank you. And if you could shout out and say thank you to somebody or, you know, always be nice to someone, it always comes back to you. You know, what comes around goes around, you know. Not always, you know. We, I can't say that everything in my life has been, you know, perfect. You, you run into some people that are a little harder to get along with than others. But for the most part, myself being a heel, you don't want to run around being a heel, you know. You just want to be gracious and respectful. I think that's important. Yeah, we lose that sometimes. Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you, Billy. In regards to uh, what Hollywood said about the about Plan B, you're th this is the opposite to that. Is that um, are you familiar with uh, Hernan Gort Cortez? The name sounds familiar, but it's not like clicking in my brain. So in 1519, he was a Navy captain, and when he landed ashore. He wanted to make sure that he was going to win the war. So he set all of his own ships on fire. Oh, wow. <laughs> Whoa. What was, Hernan, what was the last name? Uh, Cortez. Ah, uh, Cortez. Yeah. The, the idea is that um, you, I'm sure you've heard the phrase that a salary is something they give you to stop you from chasing your dreams. Mm hmm. Yeah. But, you know, I, I don't know. I feel, I've heard, I listen to so many, you know, motivational speakers where they say, like, the people that make it are the people who don't have a plan B. Like they only focused on plan A. They were going to do Look whatever. It took. Right. Exactly. Whatever it takes. No, whatever it takes. That. I wish. Yes. Whatever it takes. You know, I ended up and be careful, Billy. I ended up breaking my leg and I didn't do it in a live match. I did it after glow and I broke my leg in three places. So, and once I did that, that scared the shit out of me. And I'm like, Oh my God. I am freaked out to go into the ring again. It just played with my mind. So if I was wrestling somebody new, I was like, oh my God, they're going to break my leg. But it was just something that was going into my mind. So I still have seven screws and two plates in this leg. I'm really? not afraid as when I did it. 
oh yeah i never got them out so yeah lots of scars here and there it, it happens um but be careful you know what i mean that's just you know, it was a crazy situation that happened, but yeah, I didn't want to get in the ring. I told myself, I'm never doing this again. Never, never, never. What did I do? Four months later, as soon as I could walk again, bam, straight into the ring. We're right back because at you it. Love it. <laughs> yeah, and you do the same thing. You would do exactly the same thing because you love it and you're going to be great at it. And right now here you are 16 years old, starting at 14 or 13 years old. Uh, Ed, you see this, don't you? You see her becoming... A huge champion you know well I'll, I'll tell you what when i was um booking comedy shows i went to an open mic and i found and i saw a guy it was like his second time on stage i hired him for a show he goes on to win like a bunch of comedy festivals he's in la now billy i'm gonna tell you right now you will be in the wwe i can i saw two of her matches oh, totally and, are you oh yeah and i said she's got great presence like a great stage presence and aura about you that a lot of people don't have so I think you got like seventy five percent of the way there, but I I almost guarantee that you'll be that you'll be there, as long Thank as you so you know, much. Eddie. I think so. You will. That's oh, my I, prediction. I agree with him. I agree. I totally. You can tell right away. I could sit there and watch a bunch of girls come through, and you know right <laughs> away when that girl has the package. You see it. You have it, and, oh. and you'll go. Yeah, my Just only ask is. What uh, you're doing. You send my kids an autograph when that happens. Oh, so. totally. I got you. <laughs> yes. So that's well that's cool. Now, do you um do you work on like finishing moves or or you know being on the microphone? Is that something that you have to you know developed as well? Um yeah, there's like a lot of things that I practice like in training. Uh, we'll have like promo classes and it's just us speaking and uh, we did a drill the other day of like just cut a promo you decide if you want to be heel or baby and the class is gonna say what they thought you were and I feel like it was a good experience for me because it was like oh baby 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 heel baby and then I had to be like okay why do you think I was this and how how can I change your mind? Because like when you're in a crowd, you're going to have all these people. You have to decide. You have to like make them think what you want them to think. So I thought right. like that was a very good promo class for me to have like a better uh, understanding of like how my words affect certain situations and what people are going to think. Hmm. It's true. So true. Uh, what what do you I, and I'm not sure you're just starting out. So. Do you, would, do you enjoy, are you a heel or a baby or do you enjoy, which one do you like the best? So I'm most of the time baby faced, um, but like I have really fun okay. time being a heel when I'm at training, but no one like out in the world is like, she's a heel because everybody finds me very bubbly and they're like, yeah, we want you as a face. <laughs> and I'm like, that's fine. I'll do whatever you guys ask of me. Uh, exactly. I, um, I, I didn't know that they were going to pick me as a heel because I felt more baby. So don't let that intimidate you <laughs> if you decide, you know, that you want to become a heel because if you're doing your job, you will definitely get your booze, right? But mm -hmm. they will be the first people for an autograph. I had two guys sitting. Uh, <laughs> we were, I'm telling you, I had two guys sitting there and they, and they were booing me, booing me. And, they were the first ones up for an autograph. I looked at them. I said, you guys were booing me. I know, but we love you. So it's just <laughs> crazy how you can become still very popular, regardless if you're a heel or a baby. But mm -hmm. I think you'll do well, either one that you choose <laughs> to do. For sure. Yeah, I think, I think the most important thing is, is um, you know, developing that story in, in the ring, which I do think is a lost art today. I do but too. I wish they would bring it back. I wish they nah, would bring it back. Moves. Too. That's how just do moves. <laughs> right. That's the you know, that's what it is now. It's, it's all about it's you know, different. yeah, no, it is, it is different. But you can still figure out a way to tell the story, you know, have a comeback and absolutely, or, you know. So I do think that's important. But um now how did you come up with your in ring in ring name? How does is that do 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 uh so billy starks um it is like uh my nickname that people used to call me all the time i went by beans before i became a wrestler okay. um 
so the joke was like my wrestling name was going to be Billy Beans because everybody already knew me as Beans, and I'm so glad I didn't do that to myself. Um, and then Starks comes from uh, my dad's uh, last name. Um, Mouse's name is Robert Bellamy, but his like mom and the rest of his family are Starks. So I took that from him, and he's like, "Thank you." <laughs> All right, that's cool. That's cool. So, were you in school? Obviously, when you first started wrestling, right? Mm -hmm. And what were your, you know, what are all your friends doing while you're while you're out wrestling? <laughs> so, like, my friend group is very interesting. I think it's hilarious. Um, when I first started wrestling, I did lose a few friends because of like how often I was not allowed to hang out anymore. I was always gone. I'm always traveling. Um, but the people who've like stuck with me are still talking to me to this day, and they have very interesting lives. Um, one of my friends is a dancer, so she's traveling all the time for dancing. So she understands a little bit of like what I'm going through. Um, but like when I first started it, I think they thought it was more of like shoot wrestling where it's like on tumbling mats and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then we show them the matches and they're like, oh, this is interesting. Um, I started high school and uh, I was just very open about it. I'm like, this is who I am. You guys got to get used to it. Um, and my career options Good. teacher would play my matches during class and everybody would just be like super entertained. Oh, I love it. It was hilarious. I would just laugh. Oh my gosh. That, that that's is so cool. cool. Now, do you have to, I love I'm that. assuming, I'm assuming you have a big advantage here, but you have to have a social media presence, right? That's how you get your, mm -hmm. get your name out there. And is that something that you, that you work on as well? Um, I feel like social media has, I think it's because of my generation, this is what we grew up on. So it's very easy for me to like understand social media. Um, and it's just about content. Like it's just like, right. okay, put out a cute picture. Oh, I like cows. Here's a cow picture. <laughs> and people just seem to like hop on it. So like, I don't think it's something I really focus on, if that makes sense. I kind of just like share what I think other people are going to enjoy. And I know I already love um but i feel like just interacting with people when i like meet them like boosts my social media because when they talk about me and we're not like face to face they can share my social media and it just grows from there now hollywood cool. how do you think how do you think uh glow would have done if social media was around back then huge <laughs> <laughs> i think that we would probably have like thousands of followers for sure you know we were just in a different place you know there's no cell phones no social media i mean you only knew that you were popular if you went to that state you know or you're going right. through the airport and somebody recognizes you you have no idea and you know what you guys we received fan mail the office did but we didn't get to see all of our fan mail i had to find it out by accident when i went in to go get my check i said what's 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 that what's all those bags of mail she says that's the fan mail i go what and i was like people know who we are and you just you know you just, they wouldn't you like you, give you guys the fan know. mail you have attitude no 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 that's funny Okay, so the fan mail was like a tweet, yeah. only they had to send it to you. <laughs> and it yes. would take like two weeks to get there. <laughs> and it wasn't and it wasn't free. It made right. it pay. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. And put a stamp on it, you know what I mean? Cool. Yeah. So we didn't know. I think they wanted to keep our egos in check. I mean, you've got 30 girls who are on television, you know, and we're 20 year olds, you know, so they wanted to keep that in check and that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Nobody had an attitude or an ego. We were all one. We had nothing to complain about. We had a great group of girls. Um, we all did so well uh, traveling together. We had two buses uh, on our first, I think it was one of our first tours in Miami. We had a good girl's bus and a bad girl's bus. And then somehow it turned into one bus only. So now we had the good girls in the back and the bad girls in the front um crazy times but you know i enjoyed every minute of that i mean i'm watching people get sick off the bus you know crazy stories i'm looking at pretty johnny C. lightning and i were talking about this the other day 
we remember her and I were really into working out and staying healthy and a bunch of people got sick. And I was like, all the sickies in the back. And then I looked outside of the bus and there's Johnny C. He probably won't like this right now. Johnny Caparella. He's just in broad daylight, puking. Beastie got sick. Some of the girls got sick. But I mean, that's what happens when you get on the road. And, um, you know, the trials and tribulations of traveling and your your fans following you to all the restaurants. Those were fun times. Gosh. Well, I feel I like the car really, I just, I, I'm like Cypher Billy. <laughs> Say that again, well, Billy. Yeah, um, ahead, Billy. I think, saying? like, the car rides is, like, one of, the, like, the fun parts of wrestling, just traveling with people. Because you get so many interesting stories out of it. Yes. <laughs> and I think it's hilarious when people share them. Yes. Road stories. Um, wrestling road The funny stories. thing is, I've, like, threw up on a trip one time. So <laughs> we're, we're, like, driving. I'm sitting in the middle seat. We have five people in the car. I'm sitting there. I'm like, I don't feel good. And I, I look at Mouse because he's driving. I'm like, hey, we're going to have to stop soon. He's like, what do you mean? I said, we got to stop. If you ever been in the car ride with Mouse, he does not enjoy stopping. He's like, nope. We're gonna go. We're almost there. <laughs> when we're like three hours oh, no. away. <laughs> so we finally stop. I walk immediately into the bathroom, throw up everywhere, and I was like, mm. yeah. I knew it. I walk back out, and he's like, "You okay?" And I said, "There's definitely puke in the bathroom." But stop. I made it. <laughs> now, what's the like, furthest that you that you travel to to wrestle? Ooh, um, so I've drove to Texas before. Um, that might be the furthest, or uh, New York and New Jersey. I can't oh, really? figure out wow. which ones drive further, but uh, both were long drives. <laughs> and would you do like one oh, yeah. one match and, and come back, or would you do like a couple of matches? A couple so, of matches? when I went to New Jersey, it was for like the GCW shows, and they would do multiple days. And then uh, when I went to Texas, I kind of did a few different shows in the area. Then drove back i think we were there for like three four five days it was actually a really fun time we uh stayed at the chainsaw massacre like little cabins and it was really really fun that's cool oh i love it <laughs> did your mom go with you at that's all great. Any mm -hmm. of the shows? uh both of my like parents travel with me good. a lot um so it's either my dad or my mom always with good. me good <laughs> Now, do you ever have to miss school at all for any of the, any of the matches? Or one more time, I didn't hear you. Do you have to miss school? Do you ever have to miss uh, classes at all? Um, when St. Louis Anarchy was running before Rona, um, I would leave early on Fridays to go to their shows. Yep. And the funny thing is, when I had PE, my teacher would let me turn in my wrestling matches as like my makeup for oh. <laughs> missing PE because it's like sports and exercising. And I thought that was, like, the funniest thing. I would send her, like, a five-minute match, and she'd be like, okay, check. I was like, this is great. <laughs> oh, cool. You're working out. You really are. I mean, that's crazy. Let me ask you, when you're training and you started training, I remember being so sore and learning how to fall when I first started. Did you have that same pain? So... I remember getting a lot of bruises, but that was really my only pain. But I think it's also because I'm young. I bounce back really quickly. And then also I was doing cheerleading before that. So like my body was used to like falling and getting stepped on and stuff like that. Because I would toss a girl up, she fall on top of me, and I'm supposed to catch her. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I get it. <laughs> I had none of that training. So I remember right in here, you know, from pulling this person this yeah. way or lifting body slams, whatever. I remember feeling a lot of it in my shoulders in that area. But again, like you said, you're young. So a few bruises don't really, you know, but, but when you're not used to it, I just remember neck and shoulders was always for me. Yeah. What uh, they're so a little painful. And then you I get used to it, you know, the rope marks I, on the I back think, of my back. Do you ever have that problem, the rope marks on oh. the back of your back? <laughs> once, once. Yeah, <laughs> not not much. Um, yeah, one time it, it, I was in a ring where I think it was a, it was a Japanese or a uh, boxing. And the ropes, you guys, were almost like, they weren't padded well. 
So I hit mm-hmm. back here so hard and it struck oh. all the way up to my neck. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be in pain. And I was, I had a knot underneath so mm-hmm. bad for, I don't know how long. I remember my, my uh, fingertips going really numb. So I, I just had, until that got taken care of, it took a long time to, to heal. But um, mm-hmm. that's the only time um, that that happened. I mean, shit happens. It kind of does. It's a very physical sport and only the best survive. So there you go. Yeah. We are survivors for sure. So Hollywood, um, what is it like? I've always wondered this. What is it like to be ha- to have been part of such an iconic brand as Glow? Like looking back on it now. Well, I think that we were like one of the first to do that. And, you know, you know, we, we pretty much, you know, looking at it now, it's, you got to squeeze yourself sometimes. I'm like, oh my gosh, we really did that. Back then nobody was doing that, you know? So um, it was something that was new. And, and, And back then, I don't remember a lot of people bragging about it or talking about it. It was something that, you know, they didn't really talk about much. They just didn't. It was a whole different time and generation. Uh, And then all of a sudden we have, you know, Netflix that comes up and does a TV show about our show. That right there just made me go, oh, my gosh, someone remembered a show that we did four years ago and giving us some recognition. So it felt today two, three, four, or five years ago felt so good because, you know, you did the show, not wondering, we don't have social media, so you don't know, you know, but I am proud, so proud to do what we did. Um, And to be on the show with you guys is so cool. And to, you know, John uh, Cosper, I just want to say thank you to him, you guys. His book, he is so awesome. He writes killer. I met him at CAC. He asked me to do a forward for one of his books, The Ballad of Cousin Elvira. And I'm so like, I love anything history. And so to, you know, to go back to the 30s or 20s and read about these women wrestlers, look at them. And this lady, uh, Elvira Snodgrass, just crazy stuff. And you know, I was really honored. So thank you, John, for letting me write this forward in your book. It, it, it's just truly amazing. And so that's one thing that I never forget. We can never forget, you know, the people that are before us, the legends before us that got all of us to where we are today. Were you, were you, Kudos now, to them. wasn't there a, um, a glow song, right? Yeah. The rap. <laughs> Is that what it was? The rap? Were you in that? Yeah. yeah we had this, of course we all, yeah, okay. we would start the show with it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. There would be like gonna... thirty of us singing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, do they? Yeah, do they come? It was they interesting. I didn't know how to rap. <laughs> that that Double was thing. Yes, they copied it from the from the Bears. Right? Was it from the Bears? That's the, it. The shuffle board. Yeah. Sh- the yeah, something yeah. shuffle. The Super Bowl yeah. shuffle. That's right. I, I knew that's what it was. Yep. Super that's, Bowl shuffle. Yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. That's where it came from. Yeah. That's so funny. When I was a kid, I remember when I was watching, you know, watching that no. growing up. I'm like, they had that's how the, you know where they got that from. But that's that's awesome. So that's Billy, exactly where, people, where they got it from, you know, everything <laughs> is rinse and repeat. Billy, where will people be able to find you, uh, see you next, or where can they check out some of your stuff? Some of your stuff. So for any updates on me, you can follow all of my social media at Billy Starks, B I L L I E Starks, S T A R K Z. Yes, I try to be fancy with the Z at the end. It confuses a little bit. <laughs> um, and then I have a big cartel if you want to like check out any of my merch. Um, and then I also did a really cool collab. It's on the side uh, with Jonesy. This is not my shirt, but it's the facade one. Um, and you're welcome to go check out that. It's a Goosebumps inspired shirt, and I thought it was amazing. Cool. And Hollywood, where can we? Uh, HollywoodBotanica.com is, the, is where we can pick up the soap, right? Yep. And if you're on Twitter, it's glow at glow Hollywood. And if you're on Instagram, official glow Hollywood and Hollywoodbotanica.com. So that's it. 
And I'm cool. following Billy now, so that's awesome. I'm always I'm gonna keep following you and, and watching you and man, it would be really cool to come and see you. Do you ever get to Nashville? Do you guys come out to Nashville at all? Um, we've been there a few times, but it's been a minute since like corona and everything, like Anyhow. traveling has really slowed down. Yeah, um, I'm I know. sure to keep you updated. Right. What I do you think? You, you think you'll be away with Billy Corgan and oh. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. That's a great idea. Hollywood, you should reach you should reach out to him. I, I want to see her for sure. Yeah, that'd be <laughs> awesome. I, I will. Absolutely. Yeah, Billy's a f good friend of mine. He buys my soaps for his tea shop as well, which is kind of cool. Um, but <laughs> I did a couple of shows with them and it would be great if Billy could do the same. That would be that would be really cool. All right, ladies. Well, hey, we, are going. we uh, appreciate your time tonight, and um, we're looking forward to see you guys in the future. Thanks, Eddie, Thanks for, for having, having both of us. Bye, Billy. All right, Bye. Take care. Nice to meet you. Thanks, guys. Bye. -bye.